Hey, it's Lloyd. Come here. Okie doke. <coughs> Uh oh. Hello. Yoo Where are you, Larry Cohen? It's very interesting. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh. I can't find him. Where is Larry Cohen? Oh my. It's a whole other. This is like Obidus, Portugal. Can't find him in his own house. That says something about making your own damn movie. Making your own damn success story. Larry, where are you? Where are you? Hello? Here you are. Oh, there we go. We Boy, are. my heavens. There you go. You see, you can have a nice house if you make low budget movies. <laughs> yeah. It's all profits, that's it. As a kid in New York, I always wanted to come to Hollywood and become successful and live amongst the movie stars and have a big house and a swimming pool. And I got all my dreams, you know? God bless B-movies. <laughs> B-movies become A-movies over the years. Yeah. That's when they remake them. They, they take a million dollar movie and remake it and spend uh, $130 million to do a remake. Breaking in today as a, as a writer, director, or filmmaker, how would you say it differs from when you did it? I don't know. I, I'm not trying to break in today, I couldn't tell you, but I think today it's probably easier. How did you break in? I, bro I broke in as a writer. So before I directed any movies, I'd already written uh, dozens of screenplays and... How'd you get to do that? And I had also created a television series of my own, so I, I had a reputation. But how did I do that? I started writing scripts and submitting scripts and continuing to submit them. And, and if I found a producer that had a... a an idea that they wanted to develop, I would do it for nothing. Uh, I get a lot of free writing for people. And uh, knowing that if I did enough of that, they'd probably be embarrassed into giving me a job eventually. And they, they, they eventually were. So, you know, if you expect to get paid immediately and get rich overnight, uh, I think it's a fallacy. But if you're willing to put in some time and do, do some work and, and prove that you can deliver, uh, to be able to get jobs. You love writing. I enjoy it, yeah. I enjoyed it then, I still enjoy it now. It's, it's more pleasurable than watching a movie. Writing a movie is more fun. Sometimes I'm watching television and I say, this is terrible, I can write something better than this. I better turn off the TV and go in the next room and write something. It's, it's a much better way to spend the evening. Now when you write, um, do you use yellow pads, a tape recorder, how do you? Everything. I've used tape recorders for years, dictating scripts. I play, when I do that, I play all the parts. I act all the roles. Like I told Kim Basinger on phone booth, on cellular, I said, I played this part before you did, Kim. Because when I write these things, I act out all the parts. Just like it's a, an elaborate radio program. And uh, sometimes I write longhand on pads. Uh, I, I like the feeling of the lines running down my arm onto the page. Uh, I, I like, I like the way I can write. I write very fast when I write in longhand. I, I never use a computer because I don't like to look at what I'm writing. I don't like to read what I'm writing. I, I don't like to make judgment on what I'm doing as I go along. And you tend to look back on what you've done on a computer and look at it and see it. And it takes you out of the, out of the situation. When I'm, when I'm trapped somewhere in a desperate situation, I want to remain in that desperate situation. I don't want to stop for a minute, be out of that situation, looking at a screen and reading it back. I want to just keep going. I want to turn out 20, 25 pages uh, before I read it again. You, you, you get into a stream of, of, of consciousness situation where you don't even thinking about what you're writing. It's just kind of coming out of you automatically. And I call it automatic writing. If you, can, if you can get past the chore of actually sitting down to write, until the writing clicks in and becomes automatic, then, uh, then it's kind of magic time because you're just the audience watching and the characters are playing the scenes and they're doing their stuff and, and you're just dying to see what's going to happen next. So uh, uh, I prefer to start scripts when I don't know how they're going to work out. I mean, on phone booth, I'll take a guy, put him in a telephone booth. I got a sniper, which I borrowed from another movie that I'd done years before called God Told Me To. 
which had a sniper very prominently in the beginning of it. And I said, I'll use that sniper again. Once the guy was in the phone booth, I had to figure out what's going to happen to him for the next hour and a half, coming up with new twists and turns without letting him come out of the phone booth. So, And I didn't know from one day to the next what I was going to do. So I was anxious to get back to work because I, I wanted to know what was going to happen to this poor bastard <laughs> and if, if he was going to get out of there alive. And so it was exciting. Where do you get your ideas, like killer babies? And uh, it was, how do you get these ideas? Well, only a lunatic can get these kind of ideas, but you just get them, that's all. They kind of come to me fully, fully grown. You know, it's not like I struggle to get the whole idea of what's going to happen. I kind of know the whole story at once, at least enough to get started mm -hmm. writing it. I, I know as, as much as I want to know before I start writing it because I want to find out what's going to happen while, I, while it's happening in the script. You know, it's, uh, it's like life, you know. You get into a situation and then you deal with the situation as it comes. You don't have to know what's the, what's the, the new mod, what's the outcome. We know to know what's going to happen to us. But uh, uh, sometimes the most ab absurd and tragic and wonderful things happen to people that they had never expected. So, you know, I like the writing a script to be kind of like life. It will reveal itself as it, as it comes. Young people today think, uh, or some often think, well, you know, I'll drink or I'll take drugs and that will make me more creative. Well, What's your answer? Very possibly could. I never did. Uh, I used to drug myself up in a different way by working late at night. I would start at midnight and uh, work till four or five in the morning. A uh, number of reasons. I had kids, and I, I didn't want my wife have to run around and tell the kids, "Be quiet! Your dad's working. Don't disturb him, or don't go in your dad's office. He's working." Or everybody walking around on tiptoes. So I just didn't work when everybody was awake. I waited till everybody was asleep, and then I would work during those wee hours when the phone never rang. There was no distractions. And the only alternative to working was going to sleep. So I'd say, well, I don't want to go to sleep. I'd rather stay awake and, and dream on paper. But you know, you get into a dream state when you're physically exhausted. You stop thinking, and your mind just wanders off, and just your subconscious is released. And, and I work until these total exhaustion set in. And then uh, the next day, I'd get up and come down and read the pages, and maybe 25 pages there. And I, I had never seen those pages before. I had no recollection of having written those, those pages. As a matter of fact, uh, it's very hard for me to recall the actual uh, experience of writing any of my scripts. As soon as I write them, they kind of blanks out of my mind, and it's just like they just happened. How about writing versus directing? Well, writing is easy to do. You just get up and do it. You don't have to have a crew. You don't have <laughs> easy for you to say. No money. No money involved. You, know, you don't have to hire people. You, you just get up and go to the table and pick up your pencil and you write. How, do you, uh, how did you raise the money for your early movies? I, I, I raised the money for my movies by uh, going to people who had money, who were in the business. I didn't get money from dentists and doctors and people who like to play golf and, you know, uh, some people tell me this, uh, peanut farmers and, uh, you know, uh, cattle barons. I've always gotten my money from uh, studios or from uh, production companies. For companies. example, Bone, how did you... All right, the first one I went to, a, a, my first picture, and I wanted to have something that was uh, shootable you know, on a smaller scale. I thought, well, I can handle this story because I'm going to write a script that really has four or five main characters and one basic set, and I can shoot it here in my house. So uh, I went to Nick Vanoff, and Nick Vanoff was the producer of The Hollywood Palace, and he had just had a very successful TV series that was still on called Hee Haw. And it was on syndication and he was making a lot of money. I knew Nick was interested in getting into the movie business too. And I said, Nick, hey, I got this script. And he read it and he liked it. And I said to him, Nick, I'll, I'll, I'll just take the money from you for the shoot. And then if you like what you see, you can give me the rest of the money to finish the picture. If not, I'll get it elsewhere. But, and if you don't get your money back, your initial investment, well, then I'll write you a free screenplay or a free TV pilot to make up for it. So you'll get your money back by taking my services instead of your money. Well, he never got his money back, 
and he was gentleman enough never to ask me to write the free screenplay. Do you think it's today? Is it possible to raise money for an independent movie independently? People, people do. Uh, people do do it. I, I certainly wouldn't advise investing in a movie because chances of getting your money back are unlikely. If you're going to invest in a film because you like the guy who's making the picture, if he's your nephew or something, uh, okay. But I, I certainly wouldn't advise anybody investing with the intention of making a profit, because uh, unfortunately the, the distributor who. Who, who, who does take a tremendous risk also because, after all, advertising is extremely expensive and a small picture costs just as much to advertise as a big one. It's not like the newspaper says, oh, you've got a low-budget movie, and we'll give you the low-budget rate for the ad. And, and if you don't take a decent-sized ad, you're just kind of telegraphing to the audience that this is a throwaway movie and you're not really serious about trying to get any box office results. On the other hand, if you take the ad and spend the money, you're probably spending more than you're going to be able to gross. Of course, uh, s small pictures usually only play in a couple of theaters, and uh, you're, c you're competing with another movie that opened in 100 theaters, and so they can afford to take big ads. You, you can't afford to take big ads. So there are companies that distribute low-budget films and art films, but generally those companies have gone out of business in recent years, and the companies that are distributing uh, art house films are usually subsidiaries of the majors now. Uh, so uh, everybody has their own arts division, their own, like 20th Century Fox has Fox Searchlight. Warner's has Warner Independent. Yes. So Very independent. Everybody's got their company that is basically taking the business that was there from the independents. Only they want to pay you uh, a, 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 only a fraction what your no normal fees are. Because they say, well, this is the 20th Century Fox independent company, so we only pay 25% of what regular Fox pays for a script. Would you today take three or four hundred thousand dollars and make your own damn movie now? Or? Yeah, sure, you might make your own If it was a commercial enough subject that I thought that the, uh, the studios would bid on the picture and that we could get some uh, upfront money from the picture, be, uh, and I just have to give it away. I certainly wouldn't want to give my movie away because you give it away with the full knowledge that you're never going to get anything back. And, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't uh, you know, afford to be hiring lawyers and suing people. It's too expensive to litigate. They know it's too expensive to litigate. They have a staff of lawyers that they have on their payroll mm -hmm. and, they, and they know that you don't. And so Worst case scenario, you're going to be out spending half a million dollars to sue them over a, a, for a picture, and you don't even know if you'll ever collect a penny. So you, you can't do it. That's it. So when you enter into a contract, it doesn't even matter if they violate the contract. There's almost nothing you can do about it. So it's a tough business if you want to make any money. Okay. Can you offer some advice for someone uh, who a, a, you know, wants to make his or her or its own damn movie? Yes, you've got to disregard everything I've just said and go and do your own picture, regardless of whether you're making any money out of it at all, because uh, uh, it's the only way you're going to get into the business is to make your own picture. If you're a writer, of course, you can write your own script, and hopefully, maybe if it's a good script, someone will buy it. It doesn't cost anybody anything to read your script. Any final advice for uh, the young make-your-own-damn-movie student or uh, well, uh, want to be? Yeah, yes, I, it's going to be a tough job and a hard road, but the rewards are tremendous. And if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. As a matter of fact, everybody seems to be doing it. <laughs> uh, that's another thing that's a problem with today is that everybody and their brother has got an independent movie that they want to sell to somebody which puts the buyers in a very strong position and makes the sellers uh, very vulnerable. So wh when I was going out to sell independent movies, there weren't too many people doing it. We had a better chance of getting someone to put up some dough. But today, it's, a, it's a really a buyer's market. So you're, you're, but you've got to forget about making any money and just go out there and satisfy yourself and make a hit. Make something that makes them take notice. And then you can write your own ticket. That's what it's all about.